Tonight we're carrying on with our heavy duty knurler kit. Tonight in particular we are working on the tensioning rod. Tensioning rod runs through the upper and lower arms here, tensioning them on the work. Let's have a look at the part itself. Okay, as we can see here, the tensioning rod is from 5 16 diameter stock. It is 01 tool steel. It ends up at 3 and 5 8 inches long and has 5 16 14 threads on both ends. The supplied material is 4 inches long and we will put a heavy taper on each end of the 4 inch stock so that our die starts easily and then later we'll turn it down to the 3 and 5 eighths length. We're also going to use the tensioning rod as a mandrel when we work on our swivel pins. Let's head over to the lathe. Okay, we have our tool steel in the pallet chuck. Very nice finish because we're going to we're going to put a heavy chamfer on that end so it's easy to get our die started. We're going to create our threads with a die as opposed to single point threading. Okay, a heavy chamfer for starting our die. I'll set up our die in the tailstock. Okay, here's our tailstock chuck, our die holder, tailstock die holder. This uh, goes in the chuck, and the tailstock is stationary. This is able to rotate and move up and down the stationary part. We have our five sixteenths. 24 die set up. Bring my tailstock into position. Lock it down. See if I can get this started by hand. Gotta get a glove. Oh, I forgot to put any oil on there. So now we're using the crescent wrench. I think we got a good start here. Feels pretty good. Let's 
let's have a look. Yeah, I think we're okay here. I'm really tightening up this collet chuck, otherwise the work will turn inside the chuck, inside the collet. Good start. Keep forgetting the oil. I have a jog button on my lathe. I'm going to very carefully give it a give this a jog with it set at the lowest speed. That's working great. Turn my spindle on in reverse. That's making a great thread. I'm going to take out the work and uh, give myself a line when to stop. Okay, I've given myself a line. And we'll continue to power feed. Spitting in the chuck. There we go. Had a couple of revolutions. There we go. Okay, again, reverse spindle. Take the fuzz off that with a scotch brake. Again, uh, keep it with the reverse. Bit of 
bit of a burr right at the end. We'll, uh, we'll just hit it with a file quick. That worked really well. So, same thing on this end, we'll put that heavy chamfer so we can get the die started. Might as well mark it first. The diamond tool is Sloped. This sort of chamfering tool is flat across the top, so that is always at center height. In the diamond tool, only the very tip is at center height. So I'm going to, when I do my chamfer, I'm going to try and keep that tip engaged. <laughs> Bring in our tail stock. I'm gonna clean the. I blew out the die to get all the chips and muck out of there. There, that's it for that end. Threading wise. We'll turn off that excess on the end. We'll try and put a bit of a rounded nose on that on the stock just for looks. Same here, we'll take off that taper dent. We're looking good. Just gonna run the file again where the threads end. There's a bit of a burr there. Okay, we have completed our tensioning rod as far as we want to take it right now. I just want to point out that this is where the tensioning rod goes in the airling tool. It of course is adjustable and applies tension on the knurling wheels against the work.
Here we have it. We'll, uh, we'll turn off these tapered ends later on in the process. We're first going to use our tensioning rod as a mandrel when we work on our swivel plates, swivel pins, pardon me. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Please comment. Subscribe.